Hello people, Zach here again today. And uh, today I want to kind of take a break a little bit from uh, philosophy and talk about climate change. Um, particularly because the, the subject popped up in one of the classes in my curriculum that um, I really don't think it belonged in. And it, and it upset me a little bit, particularly because I felt like it was trying to disinform me in, in a way that allowed for plausible deniability. And um, I said this straight up because I'm, I'm a brutally honest person. I'm going to school to get a degree in engineering. I am not going to school to get a degree in activism. Um, I don't want to talk about politics. I don't want to talk about society. I don't want to talk about environmentalism when I'm in school. So going back um, to the subject of climate change, just to put my opinions out there so you can hear what I have to say. Um, first and foremost, I don't deny that climate change exists. Uh, I think it's kind of obvious that it does exist. It has the climate has been changing since the moment the Earth came into existence. Um, it is in a constant, perpetual state of change. It has never been the same. Uh, and climate change is an umbrella term uh, to talk about uh, global warming and global cooling because it actually happens in cycles. It's not like the Earth is constantly getting cooler from some hotter temperature. It's not like it's constantly getting warmer from some cooler temperature. It has hot periods, it has cold periods, it has wet periods, it has dry periods. And uh, we have tons of evidence to support this coming from the geological, uh, geological background with the fossil record, uh, coming from like biodiversity, uh, coming from ice samples, uh, coming from like samples of tree rings and stuff. Like we have tons and tons of evidence to support the fact that there's been such things as, uh, as a massive scale climate change with continental drift, um, huge changes in geography. And even in hist yeah, history, like we know that there were warm periods during the, the Roman Empire. We know that there were, um, in, in northern areas in Europe, there were huge shifts where areas that used to be lush and green were completely taken over by ice and snow and wiped out much of the civilizations that were there. Um, so yeah, we, we have it from every perspective. We know that the climate's been changing. I am not denying that in any way, shape, or form. But here's the thing. Um... There is no evidence to suggest that it's caused by mankind at all. I mean, if you want to talk about like the changes in the fossil record, like we know um, there are areas in Ohio and Virginia where you see like um, fossilized coral reefs or uh, fossilized um, things that should have only been able to exist in tropical zones, which are completely outside of a tropical zone. So that kind of supports that. Um, but the thing is that these were dated back to a period in time that was over 390 million years ago which is like 388 million years before the oldest fossil of humans was found. How could we have caused a climate change that that uh, before we existed? It's kind of dumb. Um, and this is this is the one that really got me angry when I saw this in class because I, I felt like they were trying to disinform me by even asking if it was the possible. Um, because by asking it, you can say that, well, I wasn't really saying that it was happening. I was just kind of insinu you know, asking you if you thought it was happening because it kind of... It's a plausible deniability thing is what, I, is what I'm saying. But anyway, um, and, and you want to ask about where these cycles come from, why the Earth gets warm, why it gets cold, why it gets, I mean, it goes through these different cycles. One of it is because the Earth is on a procession, um, not just uh, the type of uh, procession we know about, like that five-degree wobble, but there's also a procession that happens on a planar level um, where one cycle takes about, I think it's like 40,000 years or something like that. So you have a 20,000-year upswing and a 20,000-year downswing. And um, this is what this is one of the things that's believed to contribute to some of the many ice ages. And uh, as well, there the, the solar uh, or the sun also has its own solar cycles. Now you got to think the sun is a giant electromagnetic field uh, around it because um, it's a basically a giant nuclear reactor. But anyway, um, the Earth's core is made of iron and nickel and like all of these different metallic elements. Do you not think that the when the sun's electromagnetic field fluctuates, that it's not going to affect the Earth in, in its core? You know, like, you, you can kind of understand here and see what's happening. Um, as these fluctuations happen, you're going to have these shifts and stuff in the core that results in volcanic activity and shifting of the continental shelves. I mean, this is just kind of expected. It should be, like, 101. Um, and, but the thing that oh, they always tend to focus on is CO2. Um, 
and and the thing I want to talk about here is that yes, we we mean we've tracked like CO2 throughout history, and you can see that the CO2 absolutely does correlate with temperature. That is undeniable. You can see it; it's clear and plain as day. But the thing is that the temperature change always precedes the change in CO2. When after the temperature rises, the CO2 rises. After the temperature falls, the CO2 falls. And the reason why this happens is because oceans hold CO2. When the temperature rises, they release that CO2 as gas. So as the Earth warms up, more CO2 exists. Never in history, until very, very recently, has the CO2 change ever preceded the temperature change. Ever. Uh, and the reason, and when it did happen, that was part of the reason for the scare. This is why they were creating uh, all of this fear propaganda where they were saying, oh my god, the Earth's going to end in like ten, the next 10 years or in the next 12 years. You know, apocalypse, apocalypse, everyone get ready. And it, like, it, there was a time when I was growing up where like every single movie that was coming out on store shelves was about about the apocalypse. You had like the day after tomorrow, just like, you, you think of it, they had it. Um... But of course, all of, the end of, all of them ended up being wrong because we're still here. The, the lakes of Michigan didn't dry up. The oceans didn't dry up. The water levels didn't rise in the oceans and like flood everyone out of the cities. It didn't happen. Uh, and it's because the CO2 doesn't cause the temperature change. I mean, the CO2, um, at this point, like the human CO2 emissions have gotten to a point that we can actually measure um, the, di the impact that we're having uh, on the CO2 levels, but it's not affecting the temperature. The temperature is still changing at the same rate it has for millions of years, which tells us that the CO2 is not causing the temperature change. So we're not going to... It's not a concern uh, as far as the greenhouse effect goes. And just to be clear, I'm not saying that we shouldn't take steps when necessary to reduce our impact on the environment, because I think that we absolutely should. Where we can reduce any impact that we have on our environment, we should. Uh, if we can reduce the burning of fossil fuels, it can, if we can reduce the emissions of gases into the atmosphere, if you can reduce soil erosion, if we can protect wildlife, if we can protect na our national forests uh, and, and our, our tropical forests, we should. We, we absolutely should be doing these things. I am not against environmentalism in any way, shape, or form. We should actually be dedicating more time and energy into doing these things. But it shouldn't be because we're terrified of the of destroying the Earth because we are not capable of destroying the Earth right now. I mean, unless we ship like um, five billion SAR bombas and blow up everywhere on Earth, it's not going to happen. What we should be doing is preparing because we have no control over what's going to happen when it's going to happen. All we know is that it is going to happen because we have uh, a historical record that shows that it's been happening recur recurringly for since. Four billion years. However old you want to think the Earth is. If you think science is right, if you think something else is right, I don't care if you think, you know, what you believe in. All we know is that this stuff is recurring. We should be preparing for when it happens. And it's certainly not helping us to be scaling back our technology uh, at a time right before this would happen. I mean, what would it going to happen if we scale back our technology to the point where our energy grid can just barely support it, but we're having no impact on our environment? But then the climate of the Earth takes a nosedive... And we go into another ice age, and our, our energy grid can't doesn't have the infrastructure and the ability to support the population, and we can't transport our resources and stuff. What are we going to do? We spent all this time and energy trying to scale back so that we could prevent a problem that we couldn't prevent, and now we don't have the technology distributed widely enough in order to deal with the problem when it actually does occur. If, if you see what I'm saying. And even if it was caused by humans, which it's not, it's fairly obvious it's not, but if it was caused by humans, we're, 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 we're fucked. Like, <laughs> uh, because the, the population has gotten to such a scale, especially in areas like India and China, like, we can't scale back any further than we currently can. Our technology is limited. I mean, unless someone tomorrow is going to kill 6.5 billion people, which is not going to happen, hopefully, uh, we're, we're fucked. There, there's nothing we can do about the situation that we would have dug for ourselves. So like I said, either way, we should not be trying to worry about trying to stop something that's inevitable. We should be trying to prepare. And I don't want to say this to, to scare people. I mean, this is just my, my shape of opinion. I know I sound like I'm trying to scare you. I'm really not trying to scare you. This is, I'm just saying... 
this be, in this in this way because I'm kind of angry about the way that the, the subject is being handled, and I know that it's going to be to be pressed even harder. Um, Veritas like recently did that uh, leak where they recorded the guy from CNN, uh, the director, where he's uh, he's talking about like how they're going to be pushing this going forward because of the wariness people have about hearing about COVID all the time. So that, that's just the direction that it's going to go. And so, if you agree with me, if you disagree with me, um, leave a comment down below. Um, let me know what you think. But other than that, that's that's really all I had to say. I, I, it's more of a vent video, I guess, um, rather than sharing any particular ideas. But uh, thank you for watching.